Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the final La Liga video of the season, uh, the final where I review matches. As I said for all the other videos, I will uh, make a quick season summary which will come out over the next few weeks where we look at how uh, things have developed and you know, um, not necessarily rating but looking at performances and all those kind of things. So yeah. That's uh, gonna come. Also, I will do, of course, all for all the playoff games. Uh, we will talk in Portugal, their playoffs. I will do one big video at the beginning of next week uh, talking about all these playoffs that have been happening. In any case. Oh, it was... <laughs> you see me wearing Mallorca and I know this video is rather late. I did not see anything live here, but I had to... Um, I, I had to watch highlights and I wanted to do this video a whole lot sooner. The problem is I didn't get to it because I was re I really had a lot of work. So I'm doing it another day after the Europa League final and I was still uh, conference league final and I still have to talk about that uh, particular final as well. But that will come later as things have to settle. Any case, better late than never and I needed to get this done. Uh, it really was all about the relegation battle here. I mean, up top, uh, we have more or less everything decided. I mean, uh, La Liga has is turning now into kind of this uh, two-class society. And within the upper class, there's even uh, another level where we basically have the same four leagues, in, four, four teams in the Champions League that uh, have qualified like uh, last year. So the top four stay the same. We have the top three round running out is also exactly the same teams, uh, even almost in the same order as last season, almost because Atletico Madrid, of course, were champions, uh, which to me is a little bit worrying. And um, the teams that want to get in, like Atletic Club, just, uh, just cannot get in at this very moment. However, as always, there's a little bit uh, drama on the bottom. Very Mallorca. Ah, uh, that was a surprise. Unfortunately, I am losing one team again this season. Granada back there. I hope that Valladolid will make it back up so that uh, we have at least some uh, sort of exchange coming on. But yeah, I will probably also need to make a video about uh, jerseys of teams that are currently not in the top league. That would be interesting. So. But first, we will start in Portugal. Uh, we're here we have the last results uh, from the league. Up top, we already knew everything is decided. It was all about uh, relegation, where um, Morerenge win 4 win over Vizela, Tondela only a 2 2 against Boavista, which is in the end not enough for either of them. Uh, um, for Tondela to actually uh, stay in the league, and Morerenge meaning that they have to go into the playoffs, where they uh, will face uh, Chavez, uh, where the first leg was already played uh, this past weekend and uh, they lost 2-0. Um, also coming up from um, uh, Portugal 2 is uh, Rio Ave, who have been relegated last season, and Casa Pia, so two new, uh, uh, a new team. I think I, we saw them in the cup, but you know, that's coming uh, from Portugal. Then uh, we also had the cup final with Porto beating Tondela 3-1. I wonder if this deep cup run is a reason why Tondela didn't make it. Team that I have always been looking out for, again for geographical purposes, because they are smack dab in the middle between the two northern and uh, uh, Lisbon cluster. Uh, they seem to be an anomaly. I feel a little bit sad that they are down, but hey, we made it to a cup final where I lose to Porto. And for Porto, an absolute amazing season ends with a double. Uh, if you're a Porto fan, it was a really, really, really good season, one must say. Okay, going over to Spain, uh, round 37 seems a little bit far back now. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's look at the results. I think the bi a big one was, of course, that uh, Sevilla and Atletico Madrid play a 1-1. At that point, they both had qualified for the Champions League. Uh, all the games were played at the same time. It was also the marquee fixture there. Um, uh, and it also kept Atletico Madrid in contention for the third place because Sevilla, yeah, if they would have won that one, they would have gone ahead of Atletico Madrid, blah, 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 blah. Um, Atletic Club with a 2-0 over Osasuna kept their chances alive for a European spot uh, because, as we see on the bottom, Villarreal managed to lose at home to Real Sociedad who then have secured their Europa League spot at that point. 
Uh, Betis with a 2 nil over Granada um, kept Granada kind of on the edge and we know that this didn't end well. Um, also, pretty huge result. Uh, Cadiz um, played a second string Real Madrid team where they found themselves down very quickly through Mariano Diaz, but they get the equal to uh, Sobrino and then Alfredo, ne, uh, Alberto, ne, uh, Alfredo Alberto Negredo and Negredo penalty. Was, uh, was not converted in 61st million. At that point, you really thought, is Cardiff gonna rule that penalty miss? Because if you win against the Real Madrid, those would have been really, really, really big, big points. And at that point, it really seemed like that might be the difference between Granada and uh, Cardiff. Also, Real Mallorca getting a 2 1 win over Rayo. Um, that also kept their hopes alive. I mean, they needed that win to not get relegated already after losing 6-2 uh, at home to Granada. So just ahead of um, that round of fixtures, we see here the second to the we have the top four are set. Uh, Bilbao still within reach of Villarreal, um, and we know that Villarreal had the tough fixture in Barcelona, but we'll see about that in just a sec. And then on the bottom, uh, Granada just hanging around above ho hovering only 5%. Real Mallorca was odds on to go down and um, we'll see how it developed in the last round. The first few results are all not that interesting. Uh, Real Madrid only nil-nil of those playing the Champions League final lineup. Uh, um, playing a nil-nil, but uh, it was all overshadowed by the Mbappé news. And again, I, I said it in the video where I actually have focused more on the PSG angle. For Real Madrid, this was a real blow because this was the season. They have there has been some austerity for Real Madrid, not spending the big cash because we want to have not a new stadium, and we want to present a great player. And now Holland is gone, and Mbappe is gone. I think that Real Madrid will try to hijack one player, and I actually think that uh, they might actually go for Sadio Mane or Mohamed Salah or some someone like that. Where they just, um, will they dare to go for Vlahovic? That, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking, uh, uh, Florentino Perez needs a star to inaugurate the Bernabeu. He needs a big star. The new Bernabeu, when, when it's raining, is all it is, is its glory. Now, uh, that the Real Madrid fan base didn't take it well. Uh, yes, I understand, because you have been really expecting it, so the disappointment is big. However, Tone, tone it down, Ed, while I think Javier Tebas with his uh, lawsuit, he does have a point, but please, it sounds a little bit ridiculous. You can do this, not be, it, it, it sounds like a knee-jerk reaction. I mean, if, if you really, if you really want to make a point, then uh, do it detached from this. Yes, La Liga is missing out on another star and there are more stars at PSG than are in the entire Liga. Or is there? I think La Liga is still the better league. So yeah, that much on uh, Real Madrid. Uh, Valencia against Celta was remarkable in the sense that the fans made a protest so it was an empty stadium. They don't like Peter Lim. I don't like him either, to be honest. So yeah. Then Elche 3 won against Getafe, a uh, game for the Golden Ananas, pineapple. We, 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 we call it Ananas in German, so there you go. And then it was all about rele relegation. Three games played at the same time. And for the longest of time, there was not much happening. I mean, uh, from the get-go, it seems like Granada are safe. And remember, Granada just two weeks ago beat Mallorca 6-2 away from home. A result where you really thought, okay, this will send Granada through. They also had, were the only team that had a home game against Espanyol. A decent mid-table team, but not more than that. Whereas... Um, Osasuna, also mid-table team, didn't have much to play for at, at, at home and actually um, helped Mallorca fans get, 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 get in the stadium for a decent price by you know sharing their season tickets with them. Uh, and then Alaves at home, yeah, they were already relegated. As I said, for the first half, not much happened. And then it clicked a little bit uh, when uh, Rodriguez gave Mallorca a lead in the 47th minute. Now, the screws were turned. Now it was to the, on the two Andalusian teams uh, that needed to get something. Um, the next uh, result, I mean, Granada 
created quite a few chances. Kadith also at Alaves created chances, but they could, could, couldn't, couldn't really get it done. Whereas the Mallorca game was a little bit level. I I had the feeling from the hardest that I saw. Uh, so the next um, task was then um, a penalty. Uh, it was a hands penalty. It was given for Granada. And Jorge Molina puts it wide. Uh, and then just a few minutes later, Lozano gives Cadiz the long-awaited uh, go-ahead goal. They have really been pushing. And at that point, Mallorca were safe, Cadiz were safe, and Granada were down. Granada were down, a team that not too long ago played actually in Europa League. Uh, and is probably of all the three had the best squad. But they couldn't get it done. They had a lot of... They had a lot of chances, especially the first half, that they had the penalty. And then it just seemed that the pressure was piling on because Mallorca even added a second goal uh, through Grenier in the 83rd. And all those two teams were safe and Granada is going down. It's a little, it's an absolute, it's a shock relegation. Cannot say more than that. And then on the final, uh, at, uh, finals uh, round of fixtures, it was then all about uh, will Athletic Club go ahead of Villarreal. Yes, there was the, the, the matter between third and fourth place between Sevilla and Atletico Madrid, which is actually there's uh, some money involved, but you know, Atletico Madrid have been easily 2 1. Barcelona do not show up, uh, and Pedraza against the run of play, but Barcelona were not convinced. It gives Villarreal a 1 0 lead, and then it really didn't matter. I mean, before that, uh, a goal from Ber uh, Berchiche. For Athletic Club uh, could have been given, but it was a handball in the build-up, so uh, was of course chalked off. Then Villarreal takes the lead, and from that moment on, all the excitement was gone. Uh, Villarreal doubled the lead through Gomez. Um, a severe goal is disallowed uh, <laughs> as well for a handball. Uh, and, oh, no, no, it was an offside. And then uh, Rafa Mir gets the one nil for Sevilla. So yeah, the ending of the season for Barcelona is probably pretty disappointing one has to say uh, and for Sevilla also I mean you get a win but I gotta I, I gotta say the way that it was shaping up in January February you really thought that Sevilla could maybe mount a title change and maybe even finish better than fourth they had a horrible second half of the season and uh, probably Lopetegui is on his way out I'm of two minds a it is pretty sensational Sevilla qualified for the Champions League now for a third season in a row, which is something they've never done. On the other hand, they have been disappointing. It is, you cannot really say that they have been great, but then again, take Lopetegui out, maybe someone come, 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 comes in, maybe it will be more open, however, will it be as stable? All those other things to weigh, but I think Sevilla, Sevilla has the potential for more. And especially in a season, this was such an off season for Atletico Madrid, for Barcelona, that Barcelona is finishing second. So we see here the uh, the final standings that Barcelona finished second in this league, where they have been really, 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 really bad. That Sevilla cannot take care of this is disappointing. And you see it, it's the draws. 16 draws is just way too many. Uh, fun fact, Real Madrid finished on the same amount of points as, for instance, Milan uh, and I think PSG. And they have the same uh, points average as Bayern Munich. So um, that, I think, is a fun fact. As I said, uh, Real Betis, you also could think that, uh, but you know, they, they have more up and down side. They were entertaining. Uh, They're a little bit uh, Real Betis and Real Sociedad. The Real Sociedad was not entertaining as they have been like uh, two uh, or even one season ago, but you know, uh, they are safe in there uh, in the Europa League. They are clearly the next uh, class, and Villarreal is closer to the Champions League than they have been last season. However, you also feel that with all the in injuries and, and so on, uh, they totally messed up the first half of, of the season. But there is a gulf then. Uh, Athletic Club maybe is the one team that could be poised to break into the top, top seven, but then, then there, there is a real break. Valencia is nowhere and that's a shame because that's another massive club and the rest yeah they need to have a really really good good season to even challenge for European spots. On the bottom we see uh, Granada down uh, a, po uh, a win and they would have been through they would have been through it, it, it is really and it goes also down Levante and Deportivo uh, uh, Alaves. 
Uh, at the beginning of the season, I really wanted to get an LOS jersey. I had one in mind. Glad I didn't because, yeah, maybe for one season it would have lasted. Let me know. He was looking at Levante jersey, so I could have had the absolute. Um, <laughs> it could have been really, really, really bad in many ways. So, yeah. That's it from me from uh, Spain. As I said, I will do a general roundup video for all of these leagues uh, as a last one and then we'll end the season and then I will do a big think of how I will do review videos for the next season. In any case, give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.